Okay, so let's talk about the quiz. Uh, maybe what I'll do first is I'm going to switch over to Moodle and show you how to find it. So here is my web browser, and there's Moodle. I'm hoping everyone can see that. It looks like I have the right screen shared. And if you scroll down to Moodle, uh, so go a little bit further past the lectures, you can see I have uh, a new link. So there's quiz number one and assignment number one. So this is what I want to talk about right now, uh, what's going on with these quizzes. So you can click on that and, and uh, mine probably looks a little bit different because I'm not a student. Um, but uh, when you're ready to go, you can, um, you can hit, I think it'll say start quiz now down there and you'll be able to run the quiz. So let me talk a little bit about the quiz and how this is gonna work. Um, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have 15 quizzes over the semester. Uh, so roughly one week, I think we actually have maybe 14 weeks in the semester. Uh, so maybe slightly more condensed. Basically it's one for every topic I'm gonna to have a quiz. Uh, the quizzes are going to be 10 questions each. You'll have 10 minutes to answer the quiz and uh, they're open book and you get two attempts. So these quizzes are not meant to be um, super hard, um, but they're meant to kind of get you to go through your material on a regular basis and uh, hopefully they'll prepare you uh, really well for the midterm and the final exam. Uh, in fact, the midterm and the final exam, I'll probably use uh, a recycle a number of these questions. So um, if you do well on these quizzes, it's certainly going to help you for the, uh, for the midterm and the final exam. Uh, Thought there's something else I was going to say about the quizzes. Uh, I think I mentioned you get two attempts for every quiz. And uh, I, I was going to say, don't go right into the quiz unless, I mean, I guess that could be your strategy. Um, but I recommend you do flip through the notes a little bit first and spend a little bit of time reading up on, on uh, what was covered before you do the quiz. But you get two attempts, so you can figure out your own strategy to do this. This really is meant as, uh, uh, like I said, to get you to study a little bit and as a little bit of uh, I don't want to call it a participation marks, but uh, I'm hoping everyone can do really well on the quiz part of this course. So I don't know if there's any questions about these. There's one question. Are we able to review these after to help us study? Um, yes, you will. So when the quiz is open, so during that week when it's open, you won't be able to review your quiz. Um, but if, if I program this correctly, once the quiz is closed, so that's on January, what was it? Uh, 18th or 19th, I can't remember the date. Uh, whatever next Wednesday is, because I have it open here, uh, January 19th. So at the end of January 19th, so on January 20th, the quiz will be open again and you can review it. Uh, that's how I think I have a program. Um, if it's not available, let me know and I'll, I'll go back in and figure out what the settings and you'll be able to see which questions you got right and which ones you got wrong. All right, any other questions about the quizzes? Okay, let's talk about the first assignment. Uh, your first assignment is to produce an infographic. And I'll show you some examples of some infographics in a minute. Um, if you're not familiar with infographics, just Google it. Uh, there are millions of them out there. Uh, some of them are amazing, uh, really cool to look at. Some of them are not so well done. Uh, your job is to make a nice one for this class. Uh, you can do this assignment um, individually or with a partner. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, if you want to work with a partner, that's great. Um, if you don't want to work with a partner, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just want to uh, make that an option. Um, if you do work with a partner, you get the same grade. Um, and I don't care how you did it. Uh, that's really up to you to work with your partner. And that's why I want to make it optional. It's not, a, I don't think this is a super heavy assignment, um, but if you like collaborating with someone uh, or if you have a, a good friend, um, then this is an opportunity to do so. Again, with COVID and all that, do follow all the, you know, be safe and all those kind of things, please. Um, so let me get into the details. You're gonna, it's gonna be a one page infographic. Um, you can make it, um, you know, horizontal landscape or a portrait uh, and uh, you can make it square, um, but one page. And then one page is gonna be your references. You're gonna submit it on Moodle. So, uh, I'm just going to go back to Moodle for a second here. And there we go. So if you go back here, and if you take a look where it says assignments, if you click on this, 
Uh, there's actually the handout. So this is all the information I'm going, going over right here. You can, you can download the assignment information. Do take a look at that and read it step by step to make sure you're not forgetting anything. And then, um, so again, mine looks different than yours. If this was a student view, let me see if I can switch role to student view. I think I can do that. All right, there's the student view. So when you have your assignment done, uh, you can go down there and hit add submission and you can upload your assignment to Moodle. If you have any problems with that, let me know. I think most people um, have figured it out a little bit for, um, for the plagiarism certificate. Um, so preferred formats, uh, PDF, Word, or PowerPoint. Um, if you have another format, I might not be able to read it with my computer. I know somebody uh, last semester for assignment tried to hand me in something that was an Apple format. I don't have an Apple computer um, and it wasn't readable. So she had to just resubmit it as a PDF. Most um, software packages now have the uh, ability to save as a PDF. Um, but if you wanna submit a Word or PowerPoint, um, that's, that's fine as well. So what you're gonna do is pick um, a food additive from this list. Uh, there are other food additives out there. Um, and I'm open to other ideas. Just if you have a, an idea that's not on this list and you want to run it by me, um, just uh, talk to me first because I just want to make sure that it's uh, suitable for this assignment. Um, so pick one of these or a few of these, maybe spend a little bit of time on, on, on Google and uh, you know, find something you're interested in or you think that's going to make a nice infographic. And, and then you're going to build me an infographic. And I'll, I'll show you some examples in a minute of, um, of what they might look like. So some of these things you may have heard, some of them you may have no idea what they are. Um, Olestra, for example, is a product that is a, a fat substitute, and I don't think it's even available in Canada at the moment. It's available in the States. I'm not sure about Canada. I'd have to, um, I'd have to double check that. But uh, pick one of these. Some of them are, um, are great additives. They're, they're doing wonderful things. Other things, there may be, maybe there's some health concerns. And uh, so when you make your infographic, um, you're not just going to give me some information about it, but, but give me give me a spin on it. So maybe maybe your spin is um, citric acid is the is the most amazing food additive ever, or citric acid is bad for your health and bad for everyone, right? So you know having a little spin on it might not be a bad idea. But anyway, uh, pick one, learn a little bit about it, and um, if you think it's suitable, then that's the one you want to do your infographic. So what does it need to include? Um, you have to have an image of your product, um, some sort of image of it. Uh, it can be the chemical structure. I like chemistry. I don't mind the chemical structure. That's not going to be necessarily um, what everyone's going to need. It could be a package, a spoonful, something like that. So, you know, give me a nice picture of the product. Uh, you need to tell us what it is used for. Okay, it is used to, uh, um, you know, sweeten food. Um, it is used to uh, make food thicker. Um, you know, there could, could be, could have a couple of uses. Uh, where does it come from? Um, is it, does it come from a natural source? Is it an extract from a plant? Is it uh, made by chemists in a laboratory? You know, what's going on? Uh, are there any toxicity or health concerns? Uh, and maybe there aren't any, um, but you need to at least have a sense to say that, to say that as far as science is concerned, there seems to be no toxic level of this. Maybe that's your, you have a statement like that, if that's the case. Um, and I'm hoping you have some other images or graphics to make it kind of interesting, right? This is an infographic. So I'm hoping um, you'll have something in there, some clip art or something. And I'll show you some examples of some infographics, like I said in a moment here. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, um, referencing and stuff as well, and then I'll show you those examples. Uh, so I want to see a minimum of five decent facts. Okay, um, minimum meaning you probably are gonna have more, um, but I want you to make sure you have a minimum of five. Okay, um, and, and, and by good facts, uh, I mean, you're not telling me that like, you know, let's say um, aspartame is a white powder. Um, I don't care that it's white. <laughs> That's not really um, that an important fact. Um, you, you know, it's kind of, it's not, it's just, kind of vague and, and general and whatnot. Uh, facts can be uh, quantitative, right? You can have, uh, um, you know, percentages or, or toxic levels or something like that. They could also be qualitative facts, not, not dealing with numbers. You can see my examples there. Maybe they raise the blood pressure or, 
or something like that, or, um, you know, so they can, they can fit either category. Uh, and, and they don't have to be from scientific journals and things like that, but I am expecting you to at least find data from decent reputable sources. Okay, uh, so by that, I mean, you know, it could be Health Canada or, um, you know, WebMD is not bad, uh, you know, some sort of organization that is uh, at least well-respected rather than, you know, somebody's blog or Instagram post. Uh, those kind of things uh, I would be a little bit more worried about. Um, news reports are sort of in that gray zone. Um, you know, there's some news media outlets I trust a lot more than others. Like the CBC is decent uh, and pretty good for those kind of things. They do a lot of fact checking and whatnot. Um, but then there's a lot of um, there's a lot of news outlets now that are just uh, they're just bad. Um, so if you're unsure about something, always ask. Okay. Uh, but I do want to see at least data come from decent sources. Some data is kind of um, general knowledge, like everybody knows it. Um, so it may not necessarily be something you need to get from a, a general source. Everybody's saying the same thing. The aspartame is 100 times sweeter than sugar, let's say, something like that. I uh, want to talk a little bit about how I want you to do your references. Um, you're going to do your references in the form of basically a footnote. So wherever the fact is that needs to be referenced, I want to see you have a little number beside it, okay? So you're gonna have at least five facts. So there should be five references, although some of them may be repeated, right? Maybe you, you got three of your facts from the same source and that's fine. So all three of them would end up with the number one, let's say. Uh, and if you have any um, images that are copyrighted from the internet, um, they should also be referenced in the same manner. If you're unsure about uh, usage of an image, I know when people are using things like clip arts or emojis and things like that, it doesn't really matter about referencing them, you know, but if you're using something from um, a specific website, let's say you're looking at aspartame and you, you, you know, you get a photograph from the Coca-Cola website, um, maybe that should be referenced. That's probably a um, professional photographer would appreciate that you give them some credit. Uh, depending on your source, um, it's going to look something like this. And I'll give you an example in a moment here. But I'm looking for a decent amount of bibliographical information. So I'm guessing that most of your, your information um, is going to be coming from the internet. Um, and that's fine. Um, there's a lot of good uh, information on the internet nowadays. It's not a big deal. Um, but uh, uh, just showing you some different formats in terms of what that information is going to look like. I see somebody has a question saying, are there minimum requirements for sources? I guess I didn't state that in the handout. Um, hmm. Let's say two or three, okay? Um, I know you're gonna have five facts. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have five references, but I don't wanna see all of your data from one source, all right? So I'm gonna say minimum should be two. Uh, good question. Thanks for asking that. So I'll show you an example of what the referencing might look like, okay? So here's, let's say there's a little chunk of your, uh, your infographic, right? And uh, for some reason you're talking about chocolate because why not? Who doesn't like talking about chocolate? Um, so you can see there's, there's a little footnote number there, okay? And uh, maybe the number would be there or maybe it would be on the image, um, depending on where you got the image from. I probably should have done that for the image as well. And, and that's what your, your infographic is gonna look like. So the, so the referencing on it is gonna be you know, subtle and, and small. Okay, uh, on the references page, you're going to have your, your bibliographical information. Okay, and so the book example, like I said, um, the book example, I'm looking for um, the author, the date, the, um, the name of the book, and the publisher. Okay, and that's, that's what I'm looking for. So somebody's asking, are we using the Chicago style citations? Um, I'm not looking for an exact style. Um, there's a whole bunch out there, the Chicago style, APA and whatnot. I'm more looking that you have um, the appropriate bibliographical information, okay? If you're unsure, ask, um, but I'm not going to get into, you know, making sure that your punctuation and, you know, I know um, Chicago style versus APA, sometimes the date is in brackets, sometimes it's not. Um, that I don't care about. What I care about is that you have the correct information, right? So in this case for a book, it's author, date, book title, and publisher. Right, so that's kind of kind of the main thing I'm looking for. If this was a um, a journal, then the journal 
is uh, um, has a little bit of a, a different format. You're looking at the author or authors, uh, the date, uh, the name of the article, and the name of the journal, followed by the volume number and pages. Uh, and that goes for books as well. Sometimes books have um, chapters, and, and you can put the chapter name as well. But I'm not I'm not necessarily expecting that. Like I said, I'm looking for um, that you have complete bibliographical information, right? Uh, and a website, this is probably the one that most people are going to be using, lots of websites out there, and you're probably where you're going to get most of your data. Um, so what I'm looking at is the author or the organization. So some websites, it's very clear who the author is, and you can put his or her name. Uh, if not, sometimes it's organization. So Health Canada, WebMD in, in my example here, um, it, it could be a variety of different things. It could be... Um, could be Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola um, Incorporated, I guess. I'm not sure what their full name is. Um, the name of the article. So you can see health benefits of chocolate milk. Okay. And then um, and then the, uh, the web link or the URL or whatever you want to call it. So that's the, uh, the source. So, you know, www. whatever. And then, um, and then if, there's a, if there's a date uh, with the article, um, then you're going to put that. So in this case here, you can see this article actually had a date on it. It was updated December 13th, 2020. Um, if there's no date on the article, then you're going to put the date that you accessed it, right? And so, um, and, and so you can put that down there at the bottom. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Um, this is kind of standard stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm not looking for an exact format, but that you just have the, the information is complete. And um, and neat and tidy and things like that, right? It's obvious. Um, this is how the evaluation is going to work. It's out of 10 marks, 10% 10 of your grade. Uh, so five marks is going to be for your content that you have a good, reliable information, um, those kind of things, uh, you know, readable, et cetera. Um, two marks for your referencing, um, mostly that you're using the proper formatting, but also that your sources are, are good. Uh, you know, that you're not referencing uh, some celebrity on, on Instagram, um, you know, looking for good, uh, decent sources. Now, you may have a mix. You may have some really good sources, some that are a little bit more questionable, and a little bit of a mix is okay. But like I said, the majority of your courses, your uh, sources should be from, from decent, uh, decent places. Um, maybe your images aren't necessarily from Health Canada and things like that, but, and, and that's, that's perfectly fine. And then, um, and then three marks for uh, kind of the, the presentation of the whole thing. You know, does it look nice? Uh, are the colors uh, good? Like if you're using green font on a, on a yellow background, that's, that's just terrible. Um, please don't do that to me. <laughs> uh, you want to have good contrast and layout and things like that. And, and some nice pictures, you know, not fuzzy, blurry pictures. Um, blurry pictures, uh, please don't do that to me. Uh, and one other thing to remind you of is um, I think uh, I think at least 20 people have done this already. Uh, but if you haven't done this, this is the, um, the plagiarism recognition course. Um, just a reminder to, uh, to finish this course and upload the certificate. Uh, if you don't do that, I won't mark your son. It's that simple. Uh, I think most people, like I said, at least 20 people have done it already. Uh, so that's the majority of the class. There's still a few people that haven't done it. Uh, if you've done it for another class, uh, same certificate. Uh, it doesn't expire. So if you did it three years ago, not, not a problem. If you did it last semester, not a problem. Just upload it and, uh, and, and, it's, and it's all good. So like I said, this is a requirement for me to, to grade your assignment. Um, and just some reminders about plagiarism in general, okay? Don't use anything from somebody else word for word. Do not do that. And do not quote, okay? This is not an English class where you're quoting a character, okay? I don't want to see you quoting. I want to see you using your own words, okay? Uh, and uh, you know, one of the one of the best ways to do it, if you're, you know, sometimes you, you read something and you really like what they what they wrote, and then and then look away from it entirely, and then now write your own sentence. Sometimes you'll use some of the same words. Sometimes they just have a great word. That's fine. But the sentence and sentence structure should be your own. If you're not sure about this, uh, if you have some questions, do ask. Always ask when you have questions because I want to make sure that you're doing it right. Uh, I do think academic integrity is very important. And, uh, and this is part of the exercise that you are writing, uh, you know, 
sentences, right? Um, that's just part of this assignment. And if you are not writing those sentences, if you're plagiarizing from someone else, then I can't give you the marks. It's kind of you know, pretty straightforward. And there are consequences for plagiarism. Uh, and uh, it can lead to, uh, depending on whether you've had previous infractions, it could be a, a zero on the assignment, uh, a zero, an F in the course, or it could mean you get, you get booted out, you go on academic uh, probation or whatever it's called. Uh, so just a reminder of that. So I do have some sample infographics here I'll show you. Um, most of these are not nutrition ones. Uh, I did uh, an infographic assignment for another course on genetically modified organisms. So I thought I'd show you some of those. If you're interested in seeing nutrition infographics, just Google them. Like I said, there's, there's tons out there. Um, and uh, um, just keep in mind that you're not plagiarizing again, right? If you are doing aspartame, let's say, um, one of the first things I'm going to do is Google aspartame infographic to make sure that your infographic does not look exactly the same as somebody else's on the internet. But you may see some ideas for, for inspiration, okay? Again, if you're not sure, let me know. Uh, here's a couple. Um, I just Googled these, found them off the internet. You can see that uh, infographics usually include some, some pictures. Um, sometimes they're just fun pictures, like pictures of smiley people, or, or in the case of foods, maybe I you know, some cucumbers and some lettuce and some broccoli or something like that. Sometimes it includes graphs. Uh, sometimes they make the graphs in the shapes of the food or something like that to make it kind of a little bit more fun. Uh, here's a couple more. Um, and you can see, like I said, there's a variety of different things. Uh, sometimes, you know, they're not using really complex um, images, right? If you take a look at the one on the left, uh, just very simple kind of clip art. And, um, and I really like that one on the left. Uh, it's giving me some great facts. Um, it's not cluttered, uh, so you can see that you can make an infographic that is not crazy loaded with, with reading. Um, it's very, very simple, and it's telling me a lot of information about stomach cancer in a very short amount of time, and in, in my mind, it's actually kind of fun to read this infographic because it's, it's just got some interesting images. The one on the right has a little bit more text, and that's, that's okay too, right? It kind of just depends on what you want to do. If you're unsure, if you think maybe your thing is too much or too little, um, you know, send me a draft and I can always give you a little bit of feedback. I don't mind giving people feedback at any time uh, on, on, um, on your infographic. Uh, somebody's asking if there are any programs I recommend. Um, I, I have limited experience um, with, with programs. Uh, when I was looking at making this assignment, I did go on Google and I think I found a few different ones. Uh, some will do it for free. Some of them um, you have to have a subscription or you have to pay a fee or something like that. And, uh, and, and they also had you know, some things I liked about them, some things I didn't like. Um, so worth a try. Um, probably my tool of choice would be PowerPoint because I know how to use PowerPoint really well and move graphics around. Um, but uh, again, it is really up to you, okay? Uh, and that's also part of the, uh, part of the exercise is for you to you know, figure out what software is gonna work best for you. Uh, somebody here has mentioned that Word has a few templates. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. So like I said, it's worth Google to look for infographic uh, creator or something like that and see what's out there. I bet you there's, there's a few out there that are, are decent. Like I said, I know some of them are gonna ask for your money. Somebody's also mentioning something called Canva. Um, so uh, I'm not familiar with that one, but uh, definitely worth it to check it out if it's, if it's any good. Uh, here's another one on potatoes. I thought this one was just kind of cute. You can see there's a little bit of character to it and, and whatnot, and, and I, I thought it was just a nice infographic. Um, here's another one I found. Um, this one is, is very information dense. This is done by, uh, I can't remember the name of this guy, um, but he does chemistry infographics and, uh, and they're all very uh, good and, and useful. Uh, I will show you this last one. This is one that was actually done by a former student of mine for a different class. And this was on genetically modified organisms. And uh, hmm, the formatting got a little bit messed up but you can maybe see she has her footnotes here. There's one there, I don't know what that one says. And uh, I think the font colors even came out different. I must have, sometimes when you cut and paste things from one PowerPoint to another, they kind of get messed up. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, but you can see uh, 
her layout here. And um, this was uh, more than a 100 level course. So the, the uh, types of facts and whatnot, I was asking for a little bit more in terms of, uh, of what they're looking for. They had to have one graph and, and, and whatnot. So, uh, but you can see it is, it is um, kind of fun to read, gives some good information and uh, it has a theme, right? She says, Canadian GMO canola is our future. So it's, uh, it's kind of, you know, trying to sell you on that point. Um, there's her references. And uh, like I said, this will be a second page that will be handed in with your, with your assignment. I think that is it. Are there any other questions? All right, so I think what I have, um, the due date for this is I'm giving you two and a half weeks. So this is due on January 28th. Um, so hopefully that's enough time. Um, if it's not enough time, I am open to extensions. Uh, and uh, you don't, if you need an extension, um, you, you don't need to tell me your life story. You don't even need to tell me why. Um, I know sometimes people need extensions for personal reasons and whatnot. Uh, but feel free to ask. Uh, um, just don't ask me on January 28th. Does that sound, sound good? Uh, if you ask me on January 28th, I'm probably not going to give you an extension unless literally your grandma is dying or something like that. Um, so, you know, if you're on that week and, and you need a bit more time, I'll, I'll, I'll be very open to granting extensions. Um, but like I said, you give me the courtesy of some time and, and, and being polite, you know, please and thank you. Uh, and and uh, I'll probably be pretty easy with giving you an extension. Um, I guess that's all for today. Uh, so we'll see you on Friday, I guess. And uh, hopefully uh, this assignment goes well and you have fun doing it. You learn something interesting. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, see what everyone uh, produces.